We are here to talk about homeschooling, and I remember what it's like to be a brand new homeschooler and to be completely overwhelmed by how much information there is, and, and wondering how do I know what the best method of homeschooling my children is? How do I determine what will bring good results? After all, we're gardening here, and we want to raise up godly, righteous, and just plants that are going to follow after the Torah the rest of their lives, even more so, I kind of want a child that loves to learn, loves to, to you know, dive into topics. And I, I'm imagining my children someday being parents of their own and having their own children and being really great parents because that's what reproduction in a plant is. You, you not only want to raise up a good plant, but you want it to have good seeds within it. And then it's going to raise up good plants. And then that one's going to raise up good plants. And the, the generation of plants to come are fantastic. But again, it's really easy to get overwhelmed completely by all of the different options. I remember when we were starting to plan our garden, my husband is doing several different things out in the garden, trying to see which one works best. He's got a section of the garden that's huga culture, where you take a log and uh, it's decaying and it's falling apart and you put all of the, the the dirt and everything over it, you pile it over and, and it basically decays inside the pile and on that mound you plant all of your things. And so he's, he's measuring what kind of fruit and, and yield does he get from that. Um, I have to say this year so far the groundhogs have totally demolished that section so we're probably going to have to wait another year to get a good result from that. But hey, we learned on that even as well. Then we found um, we have uh, some container gardens out there. We have um, some raised beds. We have some beds that are directly on the ground. He's been doing a back to Eden kind of garden. He's also been um, doing a section that is rototilled. Just comparing. My husband is definitely the kind of guy who likes to compare all the different kinds of garden and see which one brings the best result. Um, I have more of my kitchen garden where I have herbs and things growing because I love herbs, kitchen herbs and, and also some healing herbs. And then we have inside the greenhouse. Right now we're growing a bunch of tomatoes and peppers because it's very hot in there right now and they love that heat. And um, later on, as we get closer to fall, we'll be transitioning that over to lettuces and stuff. Well, that, that's a, a bit of an ambitious plan. Pretty much everything my husband does is a bit ambitious. And um, he spends a lot of time planning it out. He has a pile of gardening books and a whole bunch of YouTubes that he um, learns from. And he has friends that he discusses everything with to try to get the best ideas of how to do things. Definitely though, I can say as I've watched him do this and I can feel it along with him, we, we have this gardening overload feeling. So we've gone on some date nights this year and when we're on the date night, he'll bring literally a stack of 20 books with him and we sit it on the restaurant table and he's like, we got to talk about the garden. And I'm thinking, how are we going to do that at dinner? That's a lot of books, way too much to be able to go through in just one, one restaurant session, you know, one date night. And, and homeschooling parents, when I get emails from you, I hear the same things. You're overwhelmed. There's so much information. And you just today heard about homeschooling Torah. And now we just added a whole nother layer of information to your stack. And you're wondering, how am I ever going to make a good decision about how to homeschool? How do I know where to get started? How do I discern which meth methods are, are effective or are going to be the best for our family? Um, which ones are true? Which ones are biblical? Which ones can I afford? Um, how am I ever going to make this decision? And how am I ever going to go on a date with my husband and lay it all out with him and try to put into words what I'm overwhelmed with? How are we going to do that? So maybe you go on a date with your husband and bring a stack of 20 homeschooling books and, and maybe you have about 40 tabs open on your phone right now and all of these are giving you ideas and you're trying to decide what is the most effective and good way to homeschool your children. And I just want to um, give you some tips because I, I definitely have not completely conquered this area in my life. As I'm saying, we're still figuring it all out with our garden. Um, and I've been homeschooling now since, well, my first son was born in 1995. 
and um, we've been homeschooling the entire time. I have seven children. So my oldest son, we would have started homeschooling him about the year 2000. And in fact, I wanna say it was the fall of 2000 that we officially started kindergarten. Having said that, I was doing preschool stuff with him since the time he was very little. And we decided to homeschool before that as well. We, we started attending our first homeschooling conferences in about the year 1997, 1998. And that's when I started buying all the resources and getting all the catalogs. I think my first catalog came from Sunlight Curriculum and that was in 1997. I still have it. It's really a good memory for me. And I remember pouring over it. My child is playing with all his toys on the floor and I'm just making you know my highlighters going crazy back then in a paper catalog it didn't really have as much on the internet and it was just going crazy trying to learn everything I remember reading every book by Ruth Beachick but going to all kinds of seminars um, some of my favorite ones uh, let's see back in the day the blue blue Dorn family I think was one of them that we would learn from just so many books that I, I'm trying to think of some of them. Christine Miller, I heard about her way back when and Nothing New Press. Um, I'm not even sure if it was called Nothing New Press back at that time. I just remember hearing some of her blogs about, about how to homeschool. Hers was more of a classical education approach. And I just I remember being overwhelmed with all of the information. I remember in the early 2000s that we started to focus our, our thoughts a little bit more on, okay, what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? Are we just If we do it the way that God, that God says in the Bible, we probably won't be so confused. We'll be able to narrow the options down. In fact, I remember while we were thinking about this and having a discussion, we lived out in Arizona at the time, and I remember talking to my husband. I was reading the six volumes um, written by Charlotte Mason back in the 1800s and I was highlighting those. I'd printed them off of the internet and they were in a three ring binder and I was highlighting everything and I remember thinking, Craig, I'm not sure that section goes with this Bible verse. And we'd be like, how can that be? All kinds of homeschooling families, Christian homeschooling families follow Charlotte Mason, but I don't know, this part here doesn't seem to go. Not saying everything, there were so many good things in it, so many, and I learned a lot. Um, but there were a couple little things, I'm like, I just don't know if that matches. And then the overwhelm feeling would come flying back again because we had been trying to model our home after, say, Charlotte Mason or classical education or this or that method. Um, some, some years I was like, fooey on it all, I just wanna buy all textbooks. And some years I did. I bought all textbooks, say a Becca. Bob Jones got every single one of their teacher's manuals and tried to do it exactly like they said because who was I? How was I supposed to know? Maybe they knew better. But then I'd realize, wait a second, they wrote that for a classroom and I'm in a house and, and we don't have, you know, a 10 minute break every, every hour that we're going to go out to recess or go to the bathroom. It's like, it's just not like that in our house. How are we going to ever decide what the right homeschooling method is? And, and how do you keep up with it all anyway? By this point, I had a lot of children. Um, I don't think I had all seven yet. I think I was um, probably at five. And yet I was overwhelmed with just so many options, so many things I was told to do to be a good homeschool mom, so many voices that I was listening to. And so over the years, my husband and I have come up with a method of deciding and discerning. And it's not like a hard and fast rule. Um, these are just some filters that you're going to filter everything down through. Just like, okay, I have some friends that had a septic system put into their home this summer. And fascinating. Um, actually, the friend is my, my daughter-in-law and my son and her parents. And it's at, her, at their home. And, and so they are trying to... Um, find out how does this all the mess that we comes out of our homes filter down into pure and clean water just like all of the ideas that are coming into our minds how do they filter down into something that is true well here are some of the filters that my husband and I put into our family's lives to try to filter all of the information that comes at us and I hope that these will be just a little bit of a good idea for you first of all let's not forget to pray we're going to go to James chapter 1, verse 5. And this is one of my favorite verses, and it says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. 
But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. So you have to ask in faith saying, God, I know that your word has the answers and whatever answer I find, even if that means I have to throw out something that I've believed all my life, I'm willing to do that, Father. I'm willing to do this and obey what you say at any cost. And when you say that and mean it, because he knows your heart, then he will give you wisdom. And, and so I, I implore you and your husband together to ask of the Father for wisdom for your homeschooling year. Spend a lot of time in prayer. Do you ever wake up in the middle of the night wondering what you should do about a decision? Whether it's what, what curriculum to purchase or what to do about a child who's maybe having some kind of defiant attitude. Whatever issue is coming into your life right now, instead of waking up at four in the morning and worrying about it, when you wake up, let it be a trigger to pray. Say, Father, I don't know what to do about this situation. Please help. I cannot even tell you how many times as soon as I stop worrying and start to ask, he just fills us with wisdom and answers and problems that are fixed. And he shows us exactly what to do. I, I, this is a promise you can take to the bank. So that's the first filter I want you to send all of the, the, the information that's coming in through. Secondly, I want you to make goals. Okay, let's talk about goals for a second. Goals really are mentioned in the Bible. Um, I have a blog post, I'll link to that below. Um, but it, first of all, I wanna read to you Proverbs 19 verse 21. And there are many, many more verses in the Bible about planning, but here's one of my favorites. It says, there are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, Yehovah's counsel that will stand. The word plans in that verse is, in, is the word mahashaba in Hebrew, and that word means an invention. Now, I don't know what an, a plan is for your homeschooling year, but an invention. And sometimes it is as difficult to make a plan for the year as it is to make an invention like the light bulb. Sometimes it takes 99 years. Oh, wait a minute, we don't have that long. Well, anyway, 99 trials before we finally get the one solution. <sighs> But as you invent, and it says there will be many, many inventions in your, in, your, in your heart. As you do it, you're going again, back to what we said in the first layer, Yehovah's counsel, that will stand. Go to him for counsel and advice, but he does say to make plans. Go ahead and get out your paper and your pen and make a solid plan. It helps. How can you evaluate something when you have too many ideas? When you have, like I said, 40 tabs open on your phone right now, how are you going to make a good plan when there are just too many choices? Start to write them down and there's just something to be said for pen and paper. Get those plans and inventions written down. Thirdly, I'll make sure that you discuss things with your spouse. I know I've been saying that all along, but don't neglect that. Go to your spouse for counsel. If you're a single mom, um, if, if for some reason you don't have a spouse, then find a godly, hopefully an older woman that will come alongside and evaluate your plans with you. Don't go it alone. Discuss with your spouse. Now, in the case of a married woman, it's incredibly important to discuss it with your spouse because he is the head of your household. These are your children. Um, sorry, these are his children. And you need to make sure that you are running your plans not only by him and saying, hey, honey, this is what we're doing this year, but saying, these are all of the thoughts and plans and inventions that are in my heart. And I've been praying for wisdom. Honey, I know you've been praying for wisdom. What would you like us to do? And then humbly accept what he says. And I say humbly because that takes some humility sometimes. Sometimes we're like, he doesn't even know what he's talking about. He didn't read all those books that I just read and he didn't watch the homeschooling tour family conference. Oh, how is he gonna know? But you've been praying for wisdom. And, you're, and the Holy Spirit is going to guide your husband and give him that wisdom. And, and he is the head of your home. That's what the Bible says. So if this wisdom comes from Jehovah and we said we would do what he said, no, even if it blows up all of our preconceived ideas, then one of those is to run it through your husband and get his advice and do what he says. Then brainstorm. So 
I already said inventions. I'm going to come back to it. I think you should have another layer of brainstorming because there are plans and then there are plans. Here's what I mean. You can say, I want to teach grammar to my children this year. And then there's the, the, the real hard and fast plan of this is the exact tool we're going to use and this is the time of day and we're going to do it and this is the way we're going to do it. And some of that needs ironing out. Maybe, you know, your, your great invention and plan has it at this time, but you're, that's when your you're one, uh, one month old is always hungry. And, or maybe even having a one month old is gonna make it very difficult to, to get this grandiose plan and idea to work. So I think you really need to brainstorm it out. I love having a whiteboard or a chalkboard or a wall filled with sticky notes or some way that we can have ideas that are just ideas everyone throwing them out some of them are garbage but getting all the ideas out of your head and putting them out for everyone in your family children that are old enough to have some input husbands of course because it's their home and wives that have to put up with the daily practicality of everything put all those ideas out there and let's get some discussion going brainstorm and get ideas and see what's going to work in our family this year and then wait and pray some more all right, you don't have to make decisions usually quite as quickly as you think you do. Let's say that you've decided because the homeschooling Torah conference is today or you're watching this video today that school needs to start tomorrow. Is it really have to start tomorrow? I mean, do you have any flexibility with that at all? Can you push it off for just a little bit longer so that you have time to wait and pray? I have noticed even with customers that want to save a lot of money and not have to pay a monthly fee for homeschooling Torah, so they wait and they don't buy homeschooling Torah until like the day before the, they're going to start homeschooling. And I think to myself, that's probably not going to work. First of all, they don't even know where things are on the website. They don't know how to organize it all. They haven't started printing. They haven't, um, they haven't organized how they're going to run their school day probably a wise idea to put some some a boundary of time a cushion that'd be a better way of saying it a cushion of time so that as you brainstorm and have all these plans and thoughts and inventions you have um, some time to wait and pray some more and to really think um, to not be hasty in your decisions um, then as you're waiting and praying, I would recommend journaling some of the emotions and thoughts that go through your mind. And I say emotions because we as women, we have a lot of emotions. And I feel like over the course of say a month, we go through a whole high and low of emotions. And we need time to journal those out. Just because some of our emotions are low or when we're tired does not mean they're bad. In fact, there may be a lot of wisdom on our tired or slower days. Um, it doesn't have to be all high speed and intensity in a, in a homeschooling family. Um, I even have a schedule. It's like my A schedule that's if everything was perfect about life, this is how it would run. And then there's my B schedule. This is my schedule of, we all woke up with headaches this morning and man, this is, we are just not gonna accomplish everything on the list. And that's our B schedule and we just do the best we can. And it, it takes a lot of the burden off. And maybe you even need a C and a D schedule. Depends on what your life is like. I would encourage you to keep a journal and to write down your thoughts and your emotions and the highs and the lows that you go through over say a month. And I would, I would keep track of them and then adjust because life is, we are not factories. <laughs> we, we don't, you know, input this into the schedule and out comes this, that, that's just not how we work as women, as gardens, that's not how gardens work. Gardens have seasons to them and so do women. And I encourage you to journal those things out maybe the journal for you looks like grabbing your iPhone in the morning and writing it into a notes app. That's perfectly fine. You don't have to journal with just a pen. You could even talk in a voice recorder and, and keep track of your thoughts. Maybe journaling for you is just taking an actual calendar and writing a happy face or a sad face and a couple notes on each square of the calendar, what happened and why you felt that way. 
There's lots of ways to journal. You don't have to do it one way, but I do encourage you to remember the thoughts and the feelings that you have because the Father gave them to you to have a gauge of what's going on. What, the, um, As my friend Christine Miller says, an emotion is like a little flag on top of a hill saying, this is what's going on in this hill. This is what's being thought. And, and so you can use those emotions to guide and to direct. And lastly, you need to meditate, as we've said earlier today, on his Torah all day long. As it says in Psalm chapter 1, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. So don't, as you're doing all this brainstorming, go to the ungodly for advice. Don't do that. Nor stand in the path of sinners. You don't have to hang out with all the other homeschooling moms in your town who do not necessarily share your values and what is important to you in the Torah. You don't necessarily have to hang out with them. Nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Certainly do not hang out with those who make fun of the word of God. We don't have to go to the local public schools for information on how to homeschool our children. That is not a good source of knowledge. But here's where you hang out. His delight is in the Torah of Yehovah, and in his Torah, he meditates day and night. And if so, you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. See, when you have all of the inventions in your heart and you filter them down through prayer and godly counsel and um, waiting patiently instead of making hasty decisions and making sure everything is based on the foundation of the Torah, then you will be like a tree planted by rivers of water and your tree, your homeschool will bring forth fruit. It says so in the word of God. I would like to show you a verse, which this verse has been a little bit of a theme in my family this last year, and um, just really special to me. Proverbs 24, verses 3 and 4, it says, Through wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. By knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. My husband got a picture, I don't know if the word is picture, uh, a wall decoration that has this verse on it. Got it at our local Hobby Lobby store and we put it on our, our living room wall and I just stare at it a lot now. I want my house to be built and a wise woman builds it up with her hands, but it only is built through wisdom. And wisdom is found in the word of God, um, in this Torah specifically. And by fear of Yehovah, wisdom comes. So I can work really hard to establish our homeschool, but only through wisdom is it going to actually be established. And it says by understanding it is established. I think the difference between wisdom and understanding is understanding is how to apply it in a lot of different situations. And see, your home doesn't necessarily look like my home. Your children are not the same temperament, same ages, same gender, same anything as my children. And it takes understanding to take the application of what you learn, say in this conference, and to apply it specifically to your home. And then it says, by knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. So we, we have to learn things. It isn't bad to go read all of those homeschooling books, specifically if those authors are people who uphold the word of God. And there are many of those out there. Um, that knowledge can also come by learning skills. How do I teach math? How do I teach science? How do I teach history? Let's, let's hone my skills so that I can fill the rooms of our home with all kinds of pleasant and precious riches. So um, it's okay to study and to, to get better at it. Um, make sure that you're not just like, okay, whatever, it'll, it'll be fine. I don't need to know what I'm doing. Well, you do. You need to be taught. You need to be a good, skillful teacher, and that is something you can learn and I'm going to do my best to help you, but it, it takes wisdom and understanding and knowledge. So wisdom starts in the Torah. Understanding is applying it specifically to your home and figuring out how is this going to work. And then knowledge, get some good skill, moms, you can do it. This is how you can take all of the advice that's coming rushing at you and you can apply it specifically to your home, to your situation. It's not a quick thing. No, nothing I said here was a quick fix. It's gonna take a little bit of time. 
Um, you can do it. Maybe the very first thing you can do is after this conference, rush out to the store and buy yourself a journal so that you can start writing down all the thoughts and ideas that come to you. Maybe that's not the specific one for you. Maybe you need to schedule a date night so that you can have a really great heart to heart discussion with your husband, even if it means bringing all the books in your house to the date night. Um, at least you'll know where you stand. Um, maybe you need to schedule lots of date nights. Maybe you need to, hmm, take a class and learn how to teach algebra or whatever it is. Um, brainstorm those ideas and don't be discouraged. If, if it was God's intention for you to build a garden in your children's hearts, then he will equip you. Remember what we started with, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. He will give it to you. Shalom.